What you're looking at right here is the latest gameplay footage from Metro Last Light, a game plucked from the wreckage of THQ by Deep Silver. It follows the hero of Metro 2033, Artyom, as he struggles to come to terms with the events of the first game. Having wiped the Dark Ones from the face of the Earth, and the bits underneath the face of the Earth too, he's having a serious crisis of conscience. He's considered a hero by the Metro dwellers, but he's realised that the Dark Ones might not have been as nasty as they first appeared. The other problem is the age-old power struggle between humans. Two major factions are about to collide, the neo-Nazi Fourth Reich and the communist Red Line, whose leader claims to hate Nazis and yet sports the same facial hair depopularised by Adolf Hitler. And even the fucking Nazis already know about our plans. Artyom himself is aligned with a third group, the Rangers, a band of elite soldiers who are not associated with either faction. They're currently buried underground guarding a potent doomsday weapon wanted by both factions, though we're not sure how much more doom this particular day can get. Unfortunately this means that as Artyom you're a target for both the Reich and the Red Line. All this takes place again in the bleak, gloomy tunnels of the Moscow metro system, with occasional jaunts to the irradiated surface typified by the threat of asphyxiation, mutant animal attacks and the occasional horrifying hallucinatory flashback. Still, it's all just science fiction, right? Nothing to worry about. Well, the author of Metro Books, Dmitry Glukovsky, has a slightly more pessimistic view. I'm very sceptical about our prospects of, of surviving. <laughs> <laughs> this century. You know, if we do survive this century, we, we, we're going to change utterly. But uh, the question if, is whether we, we, we can do that. You know, with Iran and Israel very possibly exterminating each other, involving the states and the, the, the Islamic world, India and Pakistan, you know, with the nuclear prol proliferation that we, we, we are seeing right now, the, the chances of a global nuclear standoff involving many countries and possibly bringing the world to the states described in the Metro Last Light is more than possible. And right now, thanks to the, the comrades from North Korea uh, who are working actively on our PR campaign here, helping Metro Last Light look much more probable, uh, we, we hope that, that, that everything like, goes straight to hell. And just before <laughs> living actually this nuclear apocalypse, you can play in it. Oh, right. Well, that's a cheery sentiment. Better start building that nuclear bunker in my basement then. Still, even if you're not interested in the geopolitics of the situation, you will be interested in the fact that this is an even more beautiful and much more refined shooter than the previous game. Prepare for a lot more varied combat against smart, organised groups of humans. One section we played allowed you to either charge in guns blazing or switch off the lights and sneak past the guards. One moment. Hopefully that element of choice runs throughout the entire game. And while it might look like the metro system is a repetitive location for a shooter, when you make it to settlements like Venice, so called because it's almost completely flooded, you get a sense for the contrast in how different groups are attempting to scratch out an existence. Not to mention how spectacular the game looks when you do venture out onto the surface. It captures that uniquely bleak tone that people associate with Russian post-apocalyptic fiction. We thought we'd ask Dmitry why that is. Moreover, I can tell you that right now the only science fiction that is popular in Russia is all about post-apocalypse. And I, I believe that it may be, like psychoanalytically, it may be caused by the fact that we live now in a post-apocalyptic country. We used to be an empire and we are quite accustomed of being an empire, you know, like the Russian Empire before and the Soviet Empire after, and then it all collapsed. And uh, we actually live in a slightly refurbished and uh, renovated ruins of, of one of the broken apart pieces of the empire. And uh, if Moscow is beautiful enough to have a look at with all the Maybachs, you know, and Bentleys and all the billionaires and blah, blah, if you go, let's say, 100 kilometers outside, you can see the true Russia, and it's very post-apocalyptic. You know, so so no, 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 not a wonder that people love this kind of fiction, and not a wonder that it's so popular there, and not a wonder that it's so inspiring, and and so 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 many, so many creations are coming from from Russia in in this particular genre. So there you go. If you want to experience that gloriously grim atmosphere for yourself, Metro Last Light is going to arrive like a grey cloud on a spring day on May 14th. See you next time on Outside Xbox.